um, in the National Python Centre and taking the opportunity of speaking to James Beaton, librarian uh, for several years at National Python Centre and James also has a, an interesting subject I want to cover uh, apart from the National Python Centre of the, the Glasgow Highland Club which you have never heard of uh, uh, during the course of Piper's Persuasion interviews so we we'll really need to cover that one so uh, what to do first let's go for the Glasgow Highland Club the, the, the highlight of the, the interview if you like okay. so James a wee bit, what is the Glasgow Highland Club? Well the Glasgow Highland Club is basically a club which is for guys who are interested in the history and culture of the Highlands. I mean it was established a wee back at the end of the 19th century um, by a group of people who had an interest in supporting the language, history, culture and music of the Highlands and it's, it's really continued in that vein since then. I mean it's uh, it's a very sociable organisation. We have a number of social events uh, each year. Um, it also has a quite tight social events. Uh, sort of dinners and there's a ball and there's also um, you know we have a kind of weekend away and things like that. And people um, generally kind of uh, go on these things and it's it's uh, all just a bit of uh, kind of sociable fun if you like. Um, we also have a, a pipe band or a piping section in it, which is uh, looked after by our club piper, John Wilson, whom I know you've uh, yeah. interviewed in, in a previous interview in this series. So that's essentially the, the, the background of, of the Highland Club. Um, I mean, there have been some very famous names in piping involved with the Highland Club in terms of being uh, the club piper. Mm -hmm. um, the first club piper was Farker McCray, um, way back at the end of the 19th century, and he was um, succeeded by John McDougall Gillis, who was the club piper really for uh, quite a number of years. And interestingly enough, um, the club uh, has as its sort of pipe tune, if you like, uh, the Glendaroo Highlanders, which of course I think was so the Glendaroo Highlanders, which, is, yeah. which I think was written for John McDougall Gillis's uh, fa family, uh -huh. um, a way back in you know the eighteen fifties, eighteen sixties, something like that. Uh -huh. um, but that was that was actually chosen before John McDougall Gillis became involved with the Highland Club. But uh, yeah. he did that, and then. Um, he was succeeded uh, after his death by Robert Reed, who was the, the club piper for quite a number of years, really from the 1920s almost up until the 1960s. Um, when he resigned um, in about 1962 or 63, he was succeeded by Donald MacLeod, um, uh -huh. who was really uh, very highly regarded uh, by the, the members of the club for, for, for obvious reasons. And then when Donald, I think, died in 1983, John Wilson uh, took over duties as the club piper. So we've had some fairly sterling... Very auspicious people. Yes, indeed, we've had some fairly <laughs> sterling people involved uh, with the Highland Club on that right. level. I mean, I think in terms of the piping at the Highland Club, um, I think um, that the members um, really see the the. the the pipe band there and certainly when I wasn't involved so much in piping myself I saw it as an opportunity to get the pipes out and keep the pipes going and, and learn new tunes. Um, we have... Um, Does uh, John teach tunes? John teaches tunes, yes. He's uh -huh. always running through the sort of repertoire for the band with us but we do have a Peabrook weekend as well which uh -huh. um, initially started off in Inverera um, and then um, has been I think for the past four or five years at uh, at Kilfinnan and, and the Cowell Peninsula, so uh -huh. we go down there uh -huh. and we, we usually learn a couple of tunes uh, over the weekend with with John. I mean, sort of tunes that kind of spring to mind um, are, you know, Lament for Mary MacLeod, the kind of, the kind of favourites and yes. uh, uh, tunes like that. So um, we've, we've, we, we do that, we do that with John as well. How many papers, uh, roughly, from time to time do you have? We probably have about between a dozen and sixteen sort of fully on the books and your average practice would have between ten and fourteen at it. So okay. uh, 
Yeah, that's essentially. And no drummers. No drummers. No. Wonderful. Um, well, that's absolutely <laughs> wonderful. <laughs> um, the, the, there was, there was, um, a, there was apparently once upon a time a Highland club set of drums, right. but they were lost, I think, round about the time of the First World War, and nobody. A good ever, thing too. Yes, nobody's <laughs> ever thought to look for them again. Excellent. But uh, yes, we, we don't, we don't go for the, the drumming side of things. No, so Although so Joe, no, Joe Noble, of course, is a member of the club, so you might want to. Aye, but Joe's, uh, Joe's a class apart. Yes, that's true. That's true. So Joe's very, very knowledgeable about piping too, and he's probably there under his own right. Joe's uh, actually a frustrated uh, piper. He landed just by accident with the drums. The drums. The drum. yeah, he yeah. told us all about it in the interview. Oh, good. But uh, some people have the impression that, uh, that the Highland Club, mostly professional people, lawyers, doctors, yeah, that sort of it's, thing. It's that kind of thing. That yeah. tends to be the sort of makeup of it. And I think it tends to be very much for people who have a professional job. I mean, we have, you know, um, as you say, lawyers, doctors, we've, mm -hmm. we've had sheriffs in the past, uh, you know, Sandy McPherson, for yes. example, who uh -huh. I'm sure you'll know, Sandy yes. was a long time member of the Highland Club. Um, uh, and uh, the, they use it, I think, as something to, to play. I mean, piping for the bulk of the guys is, 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 well, for all the guys, is really very much a hobby. Very and, much a and, hobby, and, yes. You know, because if they're, they're doing sort of high pressure jobs during the day, it's somewhere where they can go and play their pipes and generally uh, have a bit of a laugh and a pint at the end of the end of the practice. And yeah. That, that tends to be the way of it. And so is it much like the Scottish Pipers Association that people take along the set of pipes, play two or three tunes, put them back in the box, somebody else takes up the cudgel? Uh, no, it, it doesn't take that uh, format. I mean, it's a bit more structured than that. Mm -hmm. um, we tend to, the, the practice sessions tend to be going over tunes on the chanter for the band to play together. And round the very, table. Round right. the table. And uh -huh. it's very much um, you know, John is very much at pains to ensure correct articulation, uh -huh. uh, correct musical expression. Right. Um, that um, you know, technique is as sound as it can be. Yeah. That um, you know, bagpipes are reasonably uh, together, um, and you know that the pipe major of the day, whoever that happens to be, um, has has the, the requisite uh, you know professional support. Yeah. Uh, so it tends to be a bit more sort of uh, focused than, than you know people just having a tune and then picking up the pipes and so on. So there's a sort of element of practice to it. That's excellent. Yes. Uh, you're covering uh, sort of, uh, small tunes or just the full gamut right well, through? Cover, I mean, I wouldn't say that we go to the extent of of playing the Highland Wedding, Bergelscher Gathering, and, and, and tunes of that nature. Aye. But um, it would be tunes that would be much more straightforward to play. Aye. I mean, I think you know, if I think of sort of the wee two four marches that we play the Mackenzie Highlanders and so on, tunes Aye. tunes like that. Um, Strathspeys, small Strathspeys, wee reels, that kind of thing. So, you know, but we we do cover the, the whole gamut, but we certainly wouldn't, I would have said, go to the, the sort of the, the heavy end and of the And has Peabrook played the, quite often at your meetings? Peabrook has played quite often at the meetings. What we generally tend to do is that there's the the the, the weekend where we go away and we, we learn a tune. Uh -huh. And we generally tend to work on that tune sort of throughout throughout the, the, the year. Right. Um, uh, for example, um, I think last year John unfortunately wasn't able to with us, but Stuart Sampson uh, came and uh, taught, and uh, we, we worked through a number of tunes, including uh, you know McFarlane's Gathering. And, yes. Uh, the, that was that was one that we kind of worked on right. throughout the year. So you play these at the end of the evening. We, we generally, yeah, we generally tend to spend a bit of time on the light music, and then some time on the pibra, on the chanters, and then yeah. get, on, get on to the pipes uh -huh. uh, after that. And at that point, you know, if there are instrument issues, John can, can sort that out or, or whatever. Yeah, so. It must be difficult. Everybody have different chanters, I suppose, yeah. and all that sort it, of it, it is. It is. I mean, but I it'll be good enough just for the, the gathering. For the gathering and yeah. for what we're doing, it's it's it's, it's absolutely fine. Yeah. Uh, you're not going out to compete at Glasgow well, Green or something. We're not going out to compete at Glasgow Green. So, and it's just a nice hobby. And uh, 
When do you meet and where do you meet? We meet on a Tuesday night usually mm -hmm. and um, that's at uh, Aunt Old Annie's Land um, at the Glasgow High School Club. Uh, ah, so we yes. tend to meet there. Right. So that has the advantage of having a good hall that we can practice in, but it also has the advantage of there's somewhere to go for a refreshment at the nice. end. So a nice bar there. So, that, so, so that, that basically is it. They had the knockout there a couple of times, didn't they? They did, yes. They had and the knockout there past probably years. around in, in the 90s, I think. Aye, right, that's right, in the, the 90s. Right. I remember being a knockout there. Uh, and interestingly, uh, the Glasgow Police Pipe Band and latterly the Strathclyde Police Pipe Band practised uh, when they practised in the afternoon during the summer at Old Anderson. Oh yes, out on the playing fields. Yeah, was the it? playing yes, fields, yeah. yes. Uh -huh. yes, yes. Uh, so uh, many, many years I was trapping back and forward to yes. Anderson, you yes, know. But it's a nice place to play. Yes, and, uh, uh -huh. it's a good place to play and I mean, uh, from the point of view of the pipers inside the hall, it's actually, there's good acoustics, so you, yeah. you can hear everything and it's, it's, it's good that way. So it's, yeah, it's, it's a nice nice environment. We've got a good relationship with the high school club. Do you have other pipers that are not members of the club be, uh, visiting and playing? Or? Not, not really, no. Oh. I wouldn't have said that that was the case. I mean, I think that, um, you know, one of the, the things that we, do try and do is kind of maybe get some new blood in as far as the piping's yeah. concerned. I mean, mm -hmm. I think, um, you know, we, we haven't had many new folk join the band of late, but but sometimes that's just due to work commitments and things like mm -hmm. that. And, uh, you know, um, we we don't tend to have, um, you know, folk coming from out with and, and joining. No, we, we, we tend, it tends to be within the membership of the club. Do you have any external activity with the, the Glasgow Hern Club, like sponsorship of some uh, competition? Or yeah, I mean, one of the things that the Highland Club does is to try and sort of promote, you know, Highland language and culture. And, you know, we have made uh, donations to various events. Um, through, you know, in Piping Live, for example, and um, we were one of the sponsors of um, the GS McLennan exhibition uh, a number of years back, which was held uh, here. We were also, we also, um, for example, give a gift or, or give a donation to uh, Glasgow Gaelic School for the library, yeah. um, and that's kind of one of the things we support. And uh -huh. you know, we also support Highland dancing in a in a small way as well. So we have a we have a wee but we have a wee fund which is kind of generated from subscriptions and uh, you know surpluses from events. It's not That's just it. an insular or organisation. Oh, no, it's not an insular organisation. We actually find out there, there and trying to... Yeah, I mean, another thing that we do is we present a medal for uh, Peabrook at the US and Barra competition every year. So the yes. winner of that gets the Glasgow Highland Club medal. It's quite a handsome medal too. It's a nice medal, yes. It's yeah. made up of the, the club crest, which is a sort of Celtic cross. And, uh -huh. uh, I was very privileged last year as the president to present it to Gordon Walker, which was a, was a great pleasure to do that. Yes. And, uh, so, you know, I think that the other thing we do, just uh, thinking about it, is we also present a Highland Club medal to the most improved piper on the BA Music, Scottish Music degree at the Conservatoire. That's excellent. Yeah. So, uh, you know, we're, so we're, you're not just rewarding no, a competition no, piping, you're not, rewarding. No. Performance well, piping. Per per rewarding performance piping, and um, we speak to, for example, Finn McDonald, Stuart Sampson, mm -hmm. and Alan McDonald, who are the three main teaching yes. uh, staff as far as that's concerned, to say, well, we have a medal that we would like to award to this young person. And, uh, and we run a schools competition as well, um, uh -huh. which is uh, something that we run once a year. So that's a solo piping, solo drumming and pipe band uh, competition. So uh, that really, it covers a lot of, um, you know, the kind of fee paying schools in the city of Dell Square, but it's actually broadened out over the past few years to include uh, bands from other schools and students from other schools. And of course, you know, at the top end of the sort of, of the juvenile pipe band grade, you have some very good bands. Very, the, very good. Like George deep. Watson's and oh, Dollar and so on. Yeah, these, yeah. Are, uh, these are very good oh, uh, yeah. juvenile bands. So, you know, the, the, the competitions are a high standard and con as, as a consequence, the competition within the within the solo playing is of a high standard as well. It's excellent that you're uh, assisting the promotion of the art. Uh, yes. Uh, oh, so, no, I think uh, so, so you're well worth the uh, 
organisation that uh, you have a uh, good reason for being out there. Absolutely, yeah, and I mean, I think that you know, for the the members themselves, there's right. um, there is a social element to it. Which Apart from the piping, though, what, what other uh, aspects you did uh, well, initially the, mention? The, other there's there's is it the language or what? Well, there's there's an element of that. I mean, the the I think um, the pipe band every so often expresses a wish to learn Gaelic. So Callum Ross, um, who is obviously a native Gaelic speaker, um, has been holding classes to do that. There's mm -hmm. also Scottish Country Dancing. There's quite a strong sort of dancing uh, group within the, within the club. Good, that's interesting. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, I think that there's a kind of informal choir and things like that. So, uh -huh. so, we, so we do all of that. So there is that social side of it, but at the same time, you know, we're, we're very keen where possible to support young people, um, you know, pursuing uh, Highland culture, pursuing Highland arts uh -huh. in the broadest sense. So yeah. that's why we're we're supporting piping, we're supporting the, the Gaelic language as well through the Gaelic school. So, as president of the Glasgow Highland Club, you brought these matters in uh, with you to the National Pipe Centre, became the librarian here. Indeed, yes. Uh -huh. Have you managed to take some of this background from the Highland Club into your current uh, work situation? Well, not, not, not to a great extent. I mean, I think that, um, you know, for me, before I came to the Pipe Centre, the Highland Club was, was very much a kind of social thing that I did out with my own professional work, which was, was as a librarian. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, my own sort of professional background is a degree in Celtic studies from Edinburgh University, plus a postgraduate diploma in librarianship uh, from uh, Robert Gordon's Institute of Technology, as it was then. Um, and, you know, I worked as a librarian, primarily in health libraries, um, for a number of years. Um, when I had the opportunity to come to the piping centre, I mean, I think that um, that background, both the, the degree and the, um, the professional training, uh, were more uh, relevant directly to what I do here than 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 you know than what the Highland Club might inform. Okay, so nuts and bolts, uh, just a uh, light skim over your duties at the uh, as a librarian. A librarian here. here. Well, it's essentially to uh, manage the library to ensure that the the stock is there and available for people to consult. Um, we are working on a digitisation pro project um, with some of the older uh, material that we have in, in analogue um, format, uh, such as tapes, such as 78 records. I mean, we have probably about 50, 50 78 records which we've, we've digitised fully and we'll make these uh, available um, hopefully over the website at some point. Um, mm -hmm. I also spent two years here um, managing a, a, an oral history project um, called Noting the Tradition yeah. and that was um, a heritage lottery funded uh, project which aimed uh, to interview 40 people who had been involved in piping over the past 50 years or so. I'm pleased to say that we, out, we outstripped the number of 40. We managed to uh, interview 45 in total and uh, that involved the creation of a website, uh, the creation of metadata uh, to sit round the um, to sit round the, the, the actual uh, recordings themselves, which basically allows people to access names, tunes, dates, places, that kind of thing. Um, so, and also to, uh, you know, have appropriate photographic material, which 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 would, would add to the interviews. And did you understand that you had these transcribed? We had them transcribed, yes, these have been transcribed fully and the transcriptions are available um, as part of the as part of the, the web uh, the, the the web resource. Um, I mean I think that the, the the transcription was very useful. It allows people to actually print these off and take them away and read them at their leisure and you know to sort of have them there to annotate them if they want to do that which is less easy to do with that, with, with the, the sound uh, side of things. And obviously with modern uh, search tools that people are looking for specific 
Did, did you put that out to an outside company? We did, yes. Uh, we, we because it would be extremely you. difficult for anybody to It's sit. very, very time consuming. I, yes. mean, I think they reckon uh, that to transcribe 10 minutes of uh, an audio interview takes an hour. That's uh, pretty good stuff because I yeah. can remember and even that, from my time in the yeah, police yes. uh, audio interviews there, yeah. some uh, times it took an hour to do a minute. Yes, absolutely. Because of, uh, you know, yeah. what did, exactly did that person say? You listen to yeah. six, eight, eight, ten times before yes. you uh, clarify. Well, I mean, I think that, you know, we put it out to a firm which was uh, basically, this was their business. Um, they were good at doing this and they obviously had people who could type very quickly because exactly. the stuff came back uh, in reasonably, reasonably uh, quick time. But right. I mean, that generally, if you're looking to organise uh, audio transcription, then that's the kind of, that's the kind of, that's how you would work. So you've got an, an hour, you know, you've got an hour and a half. That's ninety minutes. So you're looking at nine hours really to get that, get that down on paper, which is a long time. Of course you know? it is. It's a day and a bit's work, basically. Aye, and yeah. then you multiply that by the number of interviews. You multiply that by the number of interviews, then you have to look at the accuracy of the transcription. Aye. You have to listen to it, and, and so on. Mm. So it's it's a lot of work. Yeah, no, be a show in an hour either. No, it isn't. <laughs> <laughs> but that said, I mean, we were we were funded to the point of about forty three percent by the Heritage Lottery Fund. So you know uh, there were there there were, there, were, there was there was a budget heading in there for that. Aye, yeah. and uh, that's a necessary thing. Yes, absolutely. Uh, and you see, uh, uh, so it's a fairly well organised uh, project that you had. It was yes. Uh -huh. I mean, I think we were very fortunate in a whole range of things. I mean. Um, I think that we used volunteers to do the interviews, which was, um, you know, a good a good thing to do. Um, we uh, got about twenty five volunteers. So some volunteers did more than one interview. Some just did the one. I mean, some only wanted to do one. So, acting as the interviewer. Acting as the interviewers, yes. That's and interesting. We, huh? we we ran training sessions for them. Um, we got a lady called uh, Margaret Bennett, uh, who had lectured at the School of Scottish Studies, and who is a folk folklorist with an international reputation, we got her in to um, do the, the training. She basically told them about interviewing the, the, the perils of the perils of interviewing, which I'm sure you'll be well aware of. Um, right. And also um, I sort of spoke to them about piping in its background and so on. Yeah. We gave them some, we, we had digital recorders, so we gave them some uh, experience of those at the time. Um, we, uh, they, they then went off and, and, and did the interviews and I mean some of them, some of them did you know, two or three interviews and they, they, they did them remarkably well and I think we've got a very good, good resource there. Um, you know, so, so, so it was organised and as, as you'll know yourself, I mean you, you need to, you, it's the sort of thing where you need to be organised, you need to know who's right. doing what, who's got recorders, who's going where, who they're interviewing, they need to be briefed. Uh, so that you know they don't um, put their foot into it, or if they recognise that their foot is going into it, they can pull their, back out very they can, quickly. They can pull yeah. their foot out of it. Yes, and, uh, so on. And also, I mean, the subjects themselves. You know, I I can't thank them enough because they they gave up their time to be so the subjects. Forget it, forget, forget it. it. Yes, absolutely. And it's a good will of the people, yes, given of their own yeah, time. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, it's wonderful how people get quite nervous about the whole idea, yet once I'm persuaded, uh, sometimes that takes me well, uh, once I'm persuaded after two minutes on camera, they just forget the camera right. and then relax and, yes, and they have uh, right. a conversation yes, with yes, you. Yes, that's right. And that's uh, right. sometimes uh, their own fireside, that's the best place yes, to get absolutely. them. Absolutely. Some of them are comfortable. Yeah. yeah. I mean, the bulk of the interviews we did were in people's own homes. Yes. Um, you know, and we went to, I mean, we went to the borders. We did we interviewed, for example, Walter Cowan um, down in Annan. Uh -huh. um, we interviewed um, Jack Taylor, president of the Peerless Society, up in up in Aberdeenshire. 
um, one of our, the only Gaelic interview we did um, was done with the DJ McIntyre um, in Inverness. His niece Josie Burgess went up to Inverness and interviewed him. So you know we had we had an allowance for travel and so on within that as well, so that people could actually go off and and do these things. Uh -huh. So and we had people interviewed at Campbelltown and so on. So you know there was that there was that sort of yeah. uh, element to it. So yeah, thousands of man hours. Thousands of man hours, yeah. Well, it was, yes. I mean, it really I think, is. Yeah. I think we've got between you know, the editing and everything yes, else. Yes, absolutely. And if you look at the interviews themselves, I think you know the the shortest one we've got is about forty five minutes. I think, right. and the longest is about an hour and thirty four minutes, something like that. So that in itself, and then you've got people travelling to get to it, yeah. and then you've got you know the, the the whole thing. So yeah, it's it's a it's it's a very time consuming thing, but it's, it's yeah. something that's well worth it. What else do you do apart from that project, that the two two year project? Of what, well, what are you doing? I, I do a wee bit of uh, teaching as well in terms of we have a course we um, run with undergraduates uh, from overseas who are doing either a semester or an academic year at the universities of Glasgow, Edinburgh and St mm -hmm. Andrews. And we um, do a course with them via the piping centre called the Bagpipe History, Culture and Repertoire. Mm -hmm. And basically um, it's a series of lectures which I and my colleague Finlay MacDonald um, do um, and I sort of focus on the sort of the Highland culture side of things, um, mm -hmm. Gaelic language, you know, how the bagpipe and the Gaelic language, Gaelic culture, Gaelic song and so on sit together um, and Finlay focuses more on the sort of music side uh, of things in terms of looking at trends and, and piping, you know, modern competition piping, the folk tradition, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So I, I do that as well and that's actually, that takes up quite a bit of time in terms of, um, you know, the academic year because we do that uh, basically twice twice within one one academic year, if you like. We, we do uh, Edinburgh, which involves going to Edinburgh to the School of Scottish Studies, mm -hmm. which, uh, you know, uh, is, is no, no hardship for me, but it, no. it involves going there uh, to, to, to lecture um, once a week and also lecturing to students from Glasgow who come here uh, either once or twice a week and also we uh, do sort of block uh, lectures with the students from St Andrews, Finlay and I go to St Andrews and teach there and their students come here for, for a day's teaching. So, so, so that's part of the, the remit uh, uh, as well and I think, you know, um, there are one or two other administrative things that I, I, I'm involved in, but it's a small organisation, so mm -hmm. you tend to find that, that people do... You interchange with you other interchange people and, and they just know, fill in gaps right, and holidays. And, 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 and fundraising for the library is, is another yeah. issue. I speak to our development office and things like that about that. So, so that's, that's all. All, good, all gets down to money, eh? It all gets down to money, <laughs> that's right. Yes. James, Thanks very much for your time today, uh, your brief explanation, your duties, but more importantly, uh, the explanation about the Glasgow Highland Club, which Piper's Persuasion have been informed about for the very first time. Thanks very much, James, for your time. My pleasure, Alan. Thank uh, you very much.